All right, boys and girls, we are back. Uh, Tyler, take us through week three, you know, up through week three of baseball. Uh, hot storylines. Oh, damn moments, whatever you call them. Go for it. Damn. Oh, damn moments. Uh, it's kind of the last two weeks because I, I hosted last week, so I didn't have one of these segments. So um, we're going to go through uh, four of the biggest oh, damn moments uh, baseball has had to offer. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the first month here. Um, so things are starting to heat up and kind of, you know, uh, get going. So uh, I, I want to lead off. We, we, we just talked about uh, rivalries. So we're going to talk about the, uh, the Dodgers and the Padres, as I mentioned earlier. You know, I think hands down the best rivalry in, in, in sports to watch right now. Um, they just had their two back-to-back weekend series. The first one in San Diego, uh, Dodgers took two or three in San Diego. Then the uh, series shifted to Los Angeles and the Padres took three of four uh, this weekend from the Dodgers. Um, that late inning uh, comeback last night, uh, that one hurt a little bit. Um, so quite, quite incredible for, for Nando Tatis, five home runs in the series. Um, quite a statement there by Tatis and, 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 and the, uh, the, the Padres. Uh, so if this was a seven game series, San Diego would have won it in seven um, on, on, on that seventh game, but that's what you want. Um, I thought it was a phenomenal start to this uh, rivalry. Um, so Alex, just, I, uh, wanted to, I just want to know like kind of your favorite moment or, or moments from, from the, from the first seven games. Um, and then ultimately at the end of the season, uh, who do you think is going to win this this uh, regular season uh, matchup? Uh, okay, so from the first series, it's got to be Mookie Betts' game-saving catch in Game 2. Um, it was something like a 10% catch probability. You don't really see walk-off catches very often. You know, it's not – let's you know, usually it's like, oh, it's a, you know, pop fly to center, game's over. But no, 10% catch probability, Mookie Betts sealing the win for the Dodgers there. Um, as a fan of baseball, having Fernando Tatis healthy and playing at an extremely high level is super exciting to see. Not the greatest when it's against your favorite team, but yeah, five homers in a three game span. That's pretty amazing. He looks healthy. You know, we were talking, we've talked about it off air. I was real worried about it. You know, you don't usually come back from a dislocated shoulder and just be sort of fine. So Tatis going off. Um, Dodgers fans booing Manny Machado is super funny. Um, you know, it's, it is interesting because Machado never hustled for the, you know, granted like three months he played for the Dodgers. And then all of a sudden he's like hustles all the time for the Padres. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's the greatest rivalry in sports right now. Um, what I think is going to happen is the Padres are going to win the season series, yeah, but they'll still be 10 games back. <laughs> Dodgers, obviously, because I want James's money. Um, but I think it's, I think every, I mean, every single one of these games has been super close. Um, the Dodgers starting pitching seems to be a little bit better. Their bullpen's a little iffy right now. The Padres' offense is, I would say, almost better than advertised. Um, I mean, they have two, you know, MVP caliber players. Um, you know, Hosmer's looking good, Cronenworth's looking good, all these guys. So, it's gonna be it's gonna be great, but James will be giving me money by the end of the season. <laughs> yeah, um, it was phenomenal. Uh, I would say the only thing I kind of missed, you know, not not having uh, Cody Bellinger in there. I think you know missing him, that star power, doesn't make it quite as exciting. Um, but but nonetheless, uh, seven amazing games. Um, unfortunately, I, don't, I think the next time they play is in either late June or July. Uh, yeah, it's which, a while. So it kind of sucks. <laughs> like I, I I wish we had these every single weekend. Oh, I have another one. I just forgot. Sorry. Yeah. The Trevor Bauer, Fernando Tatis thing. Yes. On both sides is phenomenal. That's great. I mean, Trevor, like Tatis hits a bomb, covers his eye going around first base because that's what Trevor Bauer is doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think what you want of Trevor Bauer, but his response was perfect. Like, no, I love it. He hit a bomb off me. He should celebrate. Just like if I'm going to strike him out, I'm going to celebrate. I think, you know, we talked about in the rivalry section, you know, Eric brought it up. Um, but that is like, they're probably the two most fun players you want to watch pitch and hit against each other right now. Absolutely. I think that Trevor Bauer for now, Tatis is going to be phenomenal. They're both very outspoken and very just, they, they are who they are and they don't give a fuck about what everyone else thinks. And it makes for great baseball because I mean, Trevor Bauer is arguably probably the best starting pitcher on the Dodgers right now. And Fernando Tatis, the best hitter on the Padres. So when those two guys are clashing and they're both just these outspoken, just like, 
characteristic guys. It's absolutely amazing baseball, great entertainment. So, so, so I, I totally agree um, with that. Um, so looking forward to the re- remaining four series we have, we have left with these teams uh, and we'll see what happens. Um, so moving on to my, uh, my second, Oh damn moment. This actually happened uh, yesterday. Uh, Madison Bumgarner threw a no, no hitter. Uh, he, with, with this uh, new rule in, in, in uh, MLB uh, the last couple of years, if there's a double header, the games are predetermined to be seven innings to kind of help speed uh, things up, speed things up a little bit. Um, so they're not, you know, full nine inning games, of course. Um, so in the second game of the double header against the Atlanta Braves, uh, Diamondbacks pitcher Madison Bumgarner uh, threw seven innings of no hit baseball. Uh, so he technically got a no hitter. However, officially, it does not count as a no hitter, according to MLB statistics. Uh, it's officially defined in the uh, MLB statistics as a no hitter, as it says a pitcher has to throw uh, at least nine innings without giving up hit. So the nine innings is in the rule to count that officially as a no hitter. So it won't go down in history as a no hitter, um, but it kind of brings up an interesting debate, an interesting topic, uh, especially since these games are predetermined to be seven innings. Um, should they count as no hitters? James, I want to get your take. Um, should this count as an official no hitter? Absolutely not. Definitely Ooh. not. <laughs> I got you in there big time. Um, <laughs> I was going to bring up the entire rule thing. I looked it up and I have it in my notes and quotes and everything, but you just did that for me. You're welcome. Uh, (laughs) My biggest point against this is that there have been plenty of pitchers who have played for nine innings and not given up a hit, yet they were not credited with a no hitter. So for a pitcher to do the same thing, then be given a no hitter is unfair. Mad Bum threw 98 pitches through seven innings. So let's extrapolate that, right? And if you divide those nine in, uh, seven innings with 98 pitches, it comes out to 14 pitches per inning. So if he's at that rate, which is a pretty good rate, because technically you want about 15 pitches per inning. If he was to keep up that rate at 14 per inning, he'd end up with 126 pitches at the end of the game, which is really high. Most pitches cap it at 100. It's kind of rare for a pitch to go over 100 these days. Mad Bum hasn't gone over 100 pitches in two years. To, to expect him to do nine innings, 126 pitches in a perfect world right now wouldn't happen. He should not be credited with this no-hitter. He played great. Cool. Seven innings, 98 pitches worth. Not a no-hitter. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, the, the, the no-hitter in baseball is such a rare and amazing achievement. Um, and to kind of, you know, account that for when it's not the full nine, it, 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 it's, it, it's not the same. Um, I'm surprised there's a lot of people that are for counting it as a no hitter on, on Twitter. And like a lot of like baseball writers are like, why doesn't this count? And I'm kind of surprised by that um, because baseball tends to be filled with a lot of people that are very old school and very traditional. Uh, so the fact there's a lot of opinions going the, the opposite direction was very interesting to me. Um, but I agree with you hundred percent. No hitter is nine innings. Um, that's just how it works. Um, there, I mean, I, I don't, I couldn't tell you how many times a no hitter has been broken up in the seventh or, or eighth inning. Um, it's just you, you, you got to go the full, the full nine to, to really make it count. It's, it's, it's one of the most special things in, in, in sports to uh, accomplish. Uh, we've had two this year so far. Um, so, it, I, yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree with you, James. I, I, I don't think it, 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 it should count. Um, does anyone disagree and think they should? Or is everyone on the same page pretty much? All right, cool. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> moving on to my third oh damn moment. Uh, the Oakland A's, after a 1-7 and seven start, have won 13 in a row. Uh, that streak did get snapped um, yesterday against the Baltimore Orioles. Um, so quite a quite a crazy roller coaster of a season so far there for Oakland. Um, brought back you know memories of the uh, Money Ball A's when they won I think it was twenty three or twenty two straight games, uh, which is still an MLB record. So a lot of people were thinking, is this going to be the sequel to that? Didn't happen. Uh, kind of capped at thirteen, but still a very very impressive win streak. Um, and then kind of looking at the uh, AL West standings early here, there it's pretty interesting. A lot of us had kind of the Angels and the Astros. I think most of us as a collective kind of being the, the top two dogs in that division. Um, Oakland A's, who I picked, obviously went on that 13-game winning streak, and now they're, they're sitting up there um, in first place. The surprise team that, are, that is in the mix right now is the Seattle Mariners. Uh, they're sitting one and a half games back. They've been playing really good baseball. Um, obviously still very, very early. Um, and the Angels are sitting in third, and the Astros right there in fourth. The Astros got to a super, super great start and have not looked great since. 
Um, like I said, long season, um, but looking at it, kind of we're nearing the end of the first month of the year. Um, Eric, I want to ask you, do you see this division as a four team race um, of those four teams that I just mentioned? Yeah, hell yeah, dude. It's going to be a four team race, um, unfortunately, because the Angels are in that division. Um, I think Mariners, they started out pretty hot. Um, I think it's going to be beginner's luck for them. They, they've done this in the past. They, they have like a good start and they kind of fade away. Um, Rangers are, they fucking, of course, yeah. beefy angels a few times, but their pitching seems to be complete dog shit. So I don't think they'll be one of the four teams. Uh, angels are going to have to cling on to dear life. I feel like with their pitching, their pitching is so it just fluctuates way too much uh, for me to be comfortable um, but yeah, you know, unfortunately, the Oakland A's and the Astros ain't going nowhere. The A's have now won 13 in a row, like you just said. Um, and I got some stats because we're all big stat guys and big fact checkers. Pitcher Cole Irvin, he's from Anaheim, California, everybody. Um, he had a 6.75 ERA with the Phillies in the 2019-20 uh, season. And then now he goes to the Oakland A's, 3.86 ERA. Um, you know what I've noticed with the Oakland A's? I feel like they pick up a lot of guys um, who are talented enough. They're like they, – and they end up just working super hard when they get to Oakland and they prove themselves and they just make them a better team. Um, like, for instance, that guy right there, Cole Urban. Another guy used Myro Petit. He was a pitcher for the Angels, did horrendous with us. We traded him to the Oakland A's. Uh, and during this 13 win streak, only one run allowed in 10 innings in his last nine appearances. So he's starting to, to get hot. Um, and then you look at Matt Olson, he's batting 441. So a lot of their guys are just contributing. Um, and, you know, they, uh, a lot of guys go there and they end up be becoming like that hard blue collar worker style. Um, and they just have a good team. So I think there's we got four teams now in the race there. I think the Mariners are going to fade out. I think the Angels are going to cling on for dear life. And I think the Astros and A's are going to be dominating, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it's a – all four of these teams are kind of – are really confusing uh, uh, so far part of the season. I think a lot of teams, they're very inconsistent. Can't really figure them out yet, but I think that's just kind of the, the, the nature of the, uh, of the young season and – I think come, you know, around all-star break, we'll have kind of a better idea of what this division is going to look like, but definitely the, the, the surprise there with, with the Mariners, a um, little surprise the Astros are kind of not doing as well. Um, and then, and the angels, you know, I think got off to a pretty good start. They've kind of come back down a little bit, but I still think that, like I said, I, I think they're going to be hanging around. I think they're going to be in the conversation most of the season, whether or not they can actually make that leap to a postseason team. I'm not so sure, but I think they'll definitely be in, in the conversation um, so very interesting, the, 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 the vision there, um, James, what's on your mind. I feel like James has something he's disagreeing with here. I was just looking just at the Mariners about. schedule. <laughs> they haven't played the best teams. Uh, the best team they played is obviously the Dodgers and they beat the Dodgers one time, I believe in that series, mm -hmm. but the team that they played for the most part are the Orioles and the Red Sox. The Orioles had a 0% chance to make the postseason coming into the season, <laughs> The Orioles beat the Red Sox. The Mariners beat both the Orioles and the Red Sox. And that in and of itself is like 12 games. The Mariners are off to a hot start now. It's going to fade once they face tougher competition. Rather than, than the Dodgers, they haven't faced anybody else I've noticed like that you know should be good. Um, yeah, and like the Astros that had COVID stuff, like El Tuve was starting off the year great. He got sent down because of COVID. And I mean that's a pretty big hit to your team, as you as the Dodgers could tell with when Cody Bellinger went out. When somebody of that stature, who's that good, who's a leader on a team, gets knocked out for a couple of days, it takes a toll. The Astros are going to be better than what they seem now. Um, I think it's still going to come down to just the two th the two teams being the Angels and the Astros. The A's had great momentum, but when their momentum fades, I want to see them get back on that winning streak. They lost to the Orioles today. What does that tell you? I mean, we'll see if they can get back. Zero percent chance. Zero percent chance. <laughs> but if they can get back on another winning streak, then I'll believe them. But yeah. to have a winning streak and keep that winning streak, then get knocked down and can continue your winning ways. That's kind of the true test to see how good your team actually is. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, like I said, the, you know, the A's especially, I mean, they looked awful the first couple weeks of the season and then went on this amazing 13 game stretch where they looked unbeatable. I mean, they were unbeatable for 13 games. So it's, it's, it's interesting. I think there's a lot of teams like that in the American league, uh, in the American league overall. So a lot of teams that are going to go, going to go super hot and cold streaks. It's going to be a roller coaster of, of, of a season and just kind of who can ever, you know, as, as you mentioned, James kind of manage those highs and lows and kind of stay steady and we'll, and, and we'll see who uh, ends up on, on top um, in, in the end. Um, so moving on to my, my, my last oh damn moment, uh, Corbin Burns, pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers, has gotten off to a super hot start. Um, he has struck out 40 batters so far this season and walked zero. Uh, that's one hell of a strikeout to walk ratio. It's very, very impressive. Um, I'm not totally sure what the uh, best start to an MLB season is, um, but it's he's got to be close or probably he's already beat it. Yes, I Alex, know. Okay, well, first of all, after <laughs> I, was gonna say, I got this. <laughs> after tonight, he's got forty nine. He got nine okay. more Ks tonight than, and then um, I believe it's Kenley Jansen with fifty one okay. as a reliever. But trade and I could be wrong. Uh, no, you're. Well, I mean, I I, I don't know. I, you might you you might be right, but I I don't know if the, the stat I have has to do with just starters or or what. But I don't know. Okay. Yeah, he was a reliever, so that could be cheating go ahead thank, Tyler. i'm sorry but, no thank you for the fact check appreciate that so 49 strikeouts now to zero walks um so it's very very very, very impressive i think that the the brewers pitching staff as a whole was nasty um but trading i want to ask you about burns here uh this is a, this is a pretty awesome start um just i want to get your take on it like how many strikeouts is this guy going to throw before he finally walks somebody yeah you guys might not like what i'm about to say <laughs> um i i, I want to throw some 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 real back back in your face, but before we get there, um, yes. So um, you are right, Alex. You, I think you're right um, that um, it was a Jansen. It was a reliever as a starter. Um, this is the best stretch of any pitcher, at least and uh, at least uh, up until now. Um, he did play today, and I'll get there. Um, he, Burns is the first pitcher in the modern era to have 40 strikeouts and no walks in a stretch of four games at any point in the season. That uh, and that's since 1901. That that is a long. I mean, th there's not a. Th he set the record. Um, th the record was set back in 1893. I mean, like the game, like the like nothing was baseball man. So nothing was regular then. So yeah. um, you know, it, it, yes, it, it was incredible. However, oh, I guess to answer your question, he, uh, he got to 49 today. He still has yet to throw um, a walk. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say. 55 i'm gonna give him six more i'm gonna give him six more um and but here's the thing i know you can't count this but he hit three batters i know i know it doesn't count but he's not <laughs> that accurate if he's hit three fucking batters oh and by the way he gave up eight hits today four earned runs against today and he is two and three when he's starting i mean I, it is amazing but let's cool our jets like <laughs> Like, dude, the guy historically is not that good. I mean, he's okay. He's just not that good. He is off to an amazing start. I got to get my hats to. I got to tip my hat to him. But let's just like, it's it's amazing that he hasn't walked him. That he hasn't walked that like anybody. That that is amazing. Um, he. I mean, he. I. I don't know why you can't count a hit hit batter as a walk. Like, why is? Can anybody answer why that's not a walk? Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's less pitches. You can you can hit a batter on you know, on, on one pitch. It's not four pitches, right? So it's it's a lot easier to hit someone on one pitch than it is to walk someone on four bad pitches. So that's why hit by pitch, you know, it's it's it could be a fastball that gets away, just a pitch that gets away. It's a mistake. It happens. Um, but a walk is just one bad at bat that it's like the four, pitcher, right? right? So it's like it, it it it's a complete fuck up on the pitcher's part versus. You know, the uh, uh, hit by pitch is just like, oops, sorry, you know, accidentally or on yeah. purpose sometimes. I, I, or I can, fuck you. That. Yeah, I or fuck you. Yeah. That. that that makes sense. Um, yeah, quick question, Trin. Look, look uh, oh, go ahead. How many home runs has he given up? Uh, six. No, I mean, I, I, I don't know how many home uh, home runs won. One. Pretty solid. Okay, that's for somebody who have 49 strikeouts and have one home run. I mean, like the fact of the matter is when you to strike somebody out, you got to throw the strike zone. For the most part, I mean, people follow the ball off. True, but the fact that 
you're you're throwing him a pitch that he should be able to hit because you're throwing in this in the strike zone and to only give up one home run in the period where he's struck out 49 people is amazing no no it, it no look i i i come on this podcast to be <laughs> to bring, to, bring to, to make people raise their eyebrows to make people think what the fuck is he talking about look i, I, I had to i had to throw an angle in here that he was human today he was not he was not he was not what he has been in the in the first four games that being said, you're absolutely right. 49 strikeouts with no walks. I mean, it was already unprecedented for today, and it's still the same. Um, you know, it's it's still that stat is still intact, and he's still growing on it. And you know what? I'm gonna give him six, which is actually more than like like going into this. I'm like, oh, well, like he's probably gonna throw a walk today, and he didn't. So, <laughs> so I couldn't say like 40 or 42. Um, it is amazing. Um, I just you know I. Uh, he he did look human today. I, I have to say that. Um, and it I, I I know it's not up to him completely, but they are they do have a losing record when he start when he's starting. So I know that's not completely up to him by any means. He, he's doing his part. The offense is not doing their part, or the rest of the pitching staff's not doing their part. And that's unfortunate because you know when you're when you have a guy that's doing this type of work and he's not getting the the benefit of the win. You got to, you, you got to, you got to address that because clearly your, your guy is doing his job. Like he can't do everything. So um, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I had, to, I had to make you guys raise your eyebrows a little bit. That's part, that's part of the whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's, I'll give him 50, 55. 0% chance 55. if he's on the Orioles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brutal. All right. So 55 strikeouts before his first walk. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll see if Traden's right. Um, Let's all guess and see who got closer. Who gets closer. Okay, I'm going to go. I, I, I think he's going to get 61. I think he's going to wow. win 60. Yeah. That's James, 11 still. Yeah. James, what do you got? 66. Wow. Going up. Alex, what do you got? Um, I think he has to play the Dodgers, pitch against the Dodgers next. Yeah. And their offense has been pretty garbage last oh, week. 50. So They're also one of the best – Walk rate teams in baseball. That is true. That is, that is a good point. Is a walk yeah. machine. They're dude. very, they're uh, very good pay, play discipline. And Corbin Burns on my fantasy team. Sixty nine. Hey. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice, nice, great number. So, We're gonna Eric. go big. We're gonna go real big. I'm gonna let Eric answer, and then I have a question for the base. Sixty. Eric's got sixty. I'm so probably I'm, wrong. I, I'm sorry, Burns. <laughs> I clearly don't love you as much as the rest of the PLDL. He'll department. probably walk the first battery faces. In. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you guys: What makes? Is it just nerves, or or what makes a batter walkable? Like, is it that that they're so good that they're that pitchers are trying to get so close to the you know the edge that you know? I mean that that's the classic debate of you know it's 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 hitter versus pitcher and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, a batter is very it can be is very successful if he has good plate discipline, meaning he's he's only swinging at strikes, and he's not being fooled by pitches that look like strikes that end up being balls, right? So that's you know sliders, balls that move. Um, they, they have really good pitch recognition, so they can see very quickly and recognize very quickly. Oh, this is a slider that's starting away, and it's going to end up in the dirt. Versus some guys, you know, get nervous or they're they're not very confident up there, and they'll swing at pretty much anything because they're just trying to get just trying to make contact. And on the pitcher side too, it's like, how confident am I going to throw this fastball up and in, you know, or, you know, throw, uh, throw, throw this curveball right down the middle because he's, he's not going to expect it. Or my stuff is just that good that even if it's right down the middle, they're, they're not going to hit it. You know, that kind of that Trevor Bauer confidence, right? I'm just going to throw, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's coming and you're still not going to hit it, you know? So it, it's, it's, it's that, you know, I'm coming at you. You're, you're coming at me. The chicken um, or the egg. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's one of my favorite things about baseball. It's the kind of the, you know, the game within the game is that, is that pitcher versus uh, batter uh, 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 battle in there. I love it. Congrats Burns. I, I don't, don't mean any disrespect. I just had to have yeah. some fun. I mean, no, it's a good point. You know, he's definitely, I think we, it, we make him seem like he's this elite, probably best pitcher in baseball. And as you mentioned, he's probably not quite that, but nonetheless, his uh, streak is pretty, pretty it is amazing. Im, 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 impressive. Um, that's all I got for baseball this week, Alex. So thanks guys for, for chiming in and, uh, we'll look forward to some more next week. Yeah. I'm probably wrong about the Burns thing, but again, he's on my fantasy team. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm oh, going to, you believe. love them then, dude. Yeah. Go I'm going to believe. Yeah. I'm going to believe. Um, thank you, Tyler. As always, that was great.